OK, thank you, uh, Mr. Turner, for your kind introduction. Uh, I'd like to talk uh, about processing strategies for hot rolled medium manganese steels. Uh, Professor Krishan already uh, discussed uh, approach when cold rolling and heat treatment is, is applied. And today I'd like to focus on a different strategy when we don't have a cold rolling, but we have a hot rolling after that the steels are, are quenched or, or, or just uh, are cooled and we have a Martens Dick uh, microstructure. So um, this is a plan of my presentation. So um, I'd like to focus on intercritical analyzing for hot rolled steels. After that, I'd like to say, to show some slides about simulation of hot bent coiling without pure deformation and of course with a pure austenite defor deformation. So uh, this is a typical uh, typical heat treatment after a cold rolling. So I I uh, don't want to to focus on, on this today. Uh, just uh, I'd like to say that we can two ways way when um, continuous annealing is applied, where we have a very short time for phase transformation, or when we have a batch annealing when uh, there is a, a totally different time for phase formation and phase transformation. OK, so uh, for cold rolling approach, we have a, um, after cold rolling, we have a low carbon martensite, which is very strongly deformed. And during intercritical annealing, martensite is tempered and the next is rectocylized and after that osnite is formed, that's why we have a globular morphology of such a microstructure. And we use here um, uh, for stabilization of retained osnite three major uh, 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 issues. Monganous partitioning, when we have long enough, enough time, of course carbon partitioning and gray size reduction this is what uh, Professor Krizan showed. This is a very important uh, another factor. And uh, I'd like to indicate here some differences when we have a hot rolling approach uh, without cold rolling. So we have some differences. The first differences is that after cold rolling and intercritical uh, and before intercritical annealing, we have a uh, initial deformed, uh, deformed martensite. But when we don't uh, apply cold rolling, we have uh, also martensite, but uh, not deformed, let's say not deformed martensite. And in another strategy, it's a uh, strategy similar to coiling. We have a uh, hot rolling and direct cooling. So uh, our initial microstructure is uh, different because it's a different host night. So in general, uh, in two, in two uh, first step, we we can um, we can call that the strategy is based on heating phase transformation, and in the third one, we have a cooling strategy. And uh, in this table, uh, these differences are, are listed. Uh, it's important if we have a continuous annealing or batch annealing. In other words, if you have short times avail available or long time avail 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 available. But uh, I didn't uh, want to discuss in, in detail uh, these differences now. OK, so. Uh, our material was medium manganese steels, but with a limited manganese uh, content. This is very important from industrial point of view. For example, you could see that Vestalpina uses also a limited um, manganese content um, below 6%. Uh, here we used also aluminum, so that's the difference. 
And other, uh, other details of uh, chemical uh, composition, a little bit of silicon and molybdenum. These are initial microstructures before hot rolling, so uh, in general they are uh, laughing microstructures. On your left hand side we have a 3% manganese steels and on your right hand side we have a 5% manganese steel. So we can see that uh, this is a lab type and some retain uh, austenite exist uh, before in a, in a treatment. Uh, so, uh, aim of the work was to produce austenite perite mixtures, but for hot rolling strategies. So, uh, we applied here uh, dilatometric simulations of heat treatment and also uh, heat treatment after plastic deformation in dilatometer. And of course, we studied in detail using microstructural um, methods to confirm if uh, what's, uh, what's about Martin's ice start temperature and if we have final retain austenite in the microstructure or, or not. So, um, uh, heat treatment uh, comprised of uh, annealing the steel after hot rolling, so it was without cold cold rolling here. So uh, our material was uh, held at different temperatures like 700, 660, 720, 760 and 800 uh, for one hour. For some uh, tests we also used five, five hours uh, holding, holding time. And uh, in the a dilatometer we registered cooling curves so uh, on your uh, right hand side you have a magnified part of, of the curve so you can see that uh, uh, at higher temperatures 720 and 760 we have a fresh martensite formation during final cooling to room temperature so it means that the austenite isn't fully fully stable but uh, when we decrease temperature to 700 centigrade and 700 and 680, we have a um, we have a full stability of austenite, which was formed during and uh, during annealing. So it means that for this steel containing 5% molybdenum, uh, 700 or, or 680 are optimal temperatures for for the heat uh, treatment. Uh, here I'd like uh, to show some microstructures after this heat, uh, heat treatment. So at 800, so we can see uh, duplex microstructures uh, containing ferrite and martensite instead of retain austenite because uh, this austenite wasn't stable. When you go to uh, lower temperatures, so we can have a we have a mixture of ferrite, retained austenite, and martensite. And uh, as I mentioned from a dilatometric test, full stability of retained austenite occurs at 700 centigrade and at uh, 680 anti uh, centigrade. Mm, we can use also atomic force microscopy to characterize in more details morphology of ferrite and retain austenite because here we we can uh, we can provide such different topographical profiles across different structural constituents of course it's it isn't a direct confirmation of retain austenite stability but uh, it can also be used complementary uh, here uh, you can see that we uh, used um, different uh, etchings for, for, for etching. After needle, it's uh, nothing interesting can be visible using light microscopy, but after clumps etching, we can distinguish uh, retained austenite, which is white here and ferrite and martensite are different 
different tints uh, of, of, of blue. Uh, after five hours, um, handling at uh, 700 centigrade, we can see redistribution of carbon and monogenes to, to the oxide. And uh, initial monogenes content was uh, 5%, as you remember. And here we can see that in the Osni labs, monogenes content uh, can be as high as uh, 8%. So uh, after this time, we have a redistribution of uh, monogenes and of course of carbon. So martensite starch temperature decreases significantly, even with a still with a initial uh, so so uh, low monogenes content. Even uh, this effect uh, can uh, we um, uh, investigated in a steel containing 4% monogenes and also it's enough to stabilize routine oocyte at room temperature. Uh, retain Oostein amount was uh, determined by using XRD and uh, for example at 700 centigrade it was 37 uh, percent. We can see that after this uh, treatment uh, both of the phases ferrite and routine Oostein are lab type because this is very similar to the microstructures uh, showed by Professor Krijan when we uh, when they uh, applied uh, additional additional um, full austenization and uh, and quenching because uh, initial microstructure is uh, martensite martensite here not so strongly deformed like uh, during uh, cold cold rolling. So as you can see, uh, both at 680 and at 700 centigrade, we have a routine constant Oman reaching uh, 37%, and with increasing uh, annealing temperature, routine Oman content decreases because this fresh martensite forms uh, at the different temperatures, if, um, as I showed at about 100 centigrade so lower temperatures must be applied and now we we want to uh, decrease uh, annealing temperature further to 660 and to 640 we didn't do this um, uh, at, at the moment and this is uh, a hardness response uh, at 680 and 700 we have a similar hardness and of course with increasing annealing temperature we have a fresh we have a some fraction of fresh martensite uh, that's why hardness increases in, in this graph and uh, now i'd like to um, pass to another approach when phase transformation uh, take place during cooling so uh, let's say uh, this is a dilatometer simulation of austenitization and annealing, but from the Osnay region. So during cooling, the idea is to provoke some austenite into ferrite or austenite into bainite transformation. So something similar what we have during coiling process when we have uh, uh, a lot of hours to uh, to produce some microstructures. That's why we uh, used a different uh, temperatures from 700 to 500 centi centigrade, let's say in the intercritical, intercritical region and lower temperatures. So uh, from a, a dilatometer response, we can see on your left hand side that of course osnite is formed after uh, during during heating and on your right hand side we have a dilatometer response during cooling. A martensite start temperature of the bulk steel is 330 for a steel containing 5% monogenes and what we uh, could see here that the martensite start temperature for all NL samples is the same and is very similar to 330. So it means that uh, after, even after so let's say long 
and a link five hours after full authentication, nothing uh, nothing happened in our in our sample. So uh, we didn't produce any ferrite or any binite within five hours. This is of course the effect of monogenes, which uh, delays uh, phase transformation. That's why a uh, final microstructure is fully martensitic, and uh, it means that if we have no ferrite, there is no carbon partitioning, and of course, uh, such approach it is fake. Uh, these are some results for still containing a little bit smaller monogenes content, 3%. So the situation here is a little bit better. These are dilatometer curves uh, registered during cooling. So I mean that uh, bulk martensite start temperature is 380, and we slightly decreased this this temperature, but not not unfortunately not too much. Uh, why? Because uh, at some temperatures, like for for example at 700. We produced some fraction of ferrite, but you can see here that this uh, ferrite uh, forms such bands and its amount is very, very low. That's why we we could decrease martensite starch temperature of the rest remaining osnite only a little bit. And finally, this osnite transformed into martensite, what you can see on your right hand side microstructure. Uh, that's why we applied plastic deformation in the dilatometer. Uh, so uh, now I'd like to show a few slides with pure osnite deformation. So uh, this is a free monogenous steel. So we, we can see here that in this approach, we decreased the martensite temperature, let's say, to 320. So it's a, a better result than uh, compared to the uh, specimens without plastic deformation because we produced uh, higher uh, amounts of ferrite. Unfortunately, after such deformation, we can see that. Uh, Ferrite forms such agglomerates, uh, such such bands, but uh, in general, martensite start temperature was lowered to uh, more than without, without plastic deformation, but it's still not enough to to retain osnite at room temperature. Only in this microstructure, this white layer somewhere in the uh, osnite binitic region. We can see only a few a few laughs of routine osnite, but in general, uh, martensite start temperature is is still too too high, and of course, fresh martensite forms uh, upon uh, final cooling. Uh, when you compare uh, deformed samples with non-deformed samples, we can see that for deformed samples, martensite start is is lower but it's not enough to, to be close to, to room temperature. So we, um, uh, this approach uh, isn't, isn't so easy to, to produce osnite ferrite mixtures or osnite binite mixtures uh, in this, uh, in this uh, processing route from initial osnite uh, microstructure. To conclude, uh, I'd like to Let's say that different heat treatment approaches show that the phase transformation kinetics in hot rolled mon medium monogenous steels is very different depending on the applied heat treatment strategy. I mean, if it's uh, during cooling or it's happening during heating. Some fraction of ferrite can be produced in hot rolled steels. Uh, Free monogenous steels uh, at annealing temperature between 700 and 750, prefer preferentially for plastical deformed samples. Uh, no ferrite forms in five monogenous steels uh, even after plastic uh, deformation. 
it's of course an effect of delay and effect of uh, monogamous. Uh, ferrite forms agglomerates and bands. Martensite star temperature of the remaining gamma phase is uh, still above 300 centigrade, which is too high to stabilize routine host time. On the other hand, positive results are achieved for the five monogamous steel subjected to intercritical analyzing following hot rolling uh, simulation, I mean without cold rolling deformations. Thin lath vertical authentic microstructure is obtained after annulling 5 monogamous steel at 700 and at uh, 680 centigrade for one hour and uh, there are no uh, mm, big differences when we we uh, apply uh, longer longer times like five hours 35 percent of retain ostines can be stabilized in the steels after annulling uh, at, at this temperature now the next steps will be um, to to investigate uh, mechanical and mechanical behavior one of the important things is also to uh, to reduce um, yield point elongation, which is a real problem for cold rolled and annulled uh, steels. And this can be can be uh, avoided for cold rolled steels because of uh, pre-existing uh, dislocation. And this is uh, uh, we can predict such a such a behavior. So thank you very much for your uh, for your uh, attention. Thank you very much, Professor Grakar. Any questions? Well, once again, thank you very much. Um, if it's OK, I would like to continue with the next presentation. Dr. Radhakanta Rana from Tata Steel will present about direct hot forming of zinc coated medium manganese third generation advanced ice rank steels. Uh, hello, uh, thank you for your introduction and good afternoon to everyone here and probably good morning to those from North America. Let me share my screen. Sorry, you see it? Yes, it's visible now. Please make it full screen. Yeah. And the stage is yours. Thank you. <laughs> 